childhood neurodevelopmental disorder that I have been studying is Rett syndrome. It's estimated to affect about one in 10,000 girls. It's a disease where the symptoms appear typically after the first birthday. So the girls are born healthy. They appear to learn all the skills that a typical one year old would learn, but then they gradually lose that ability and their brain growth slows down and lose their ability to use their hands, lose communication skills and develop motor uh, abnormalities and eventually seizures. I was interested in the postnatal onset of this disease, so that's why we pursued the identification of the gene, which is uh, MACP2 methylcytosine uh, binding protein 2. And what we've learned since the discovery of the gene is that it's the major cause for Rett syndrome, but more importantly, we learned that different mutation can cause different disorders. Milder mutations may present with autism and intellectual disability, and even the mildest mutations sometimes may present with mild cognitive deficit with psychiatric features such as OCD, uh, schizophrenia, or bipolar. So it's the same gene, but different mutations can give you different clinical pictures. And on the other side, we learned that increasing the level of the MACP2 protein, doubling that gene through a duplication can cause also progressive neurological disorders. And if you triple it, it's even more severe, causing seizures, motor abnormalities, and premature death in boys. So we learn now that there's a very broad spectrum of phenotypes based on the mutation. And I don't think this is gonna be unique to Rett syndrome I, and, and the MACP2 gene. I think we're gonna learn this about many, many genes that, have, that cause childhood neurodevelopmental disorders. We're gonna learn that milder mutations of them might cause milder disorders and maybe psychiatric disorders. MACP2 bind methylated cytosines, and we believe it modulates uh, neuronal function by affecting the program of gene expression in those cells. And in its absence, there are many gene expression changes, some that go up, some that go down. And we believe the multitude of gene expression changes end up causing the neuron to function suboptimally. So each of the neurons typically don't function at full capacity, they function at reduced capacity. And this happened to so many neurons in the brain. So you end up with a clinical picture where almost every neuronal type is causing phenotypic problems in the patients.